Idiots again set the defensive line. Boromir trying to drive their way across. A couple of metres short, Barreto gets it. Centres are calling for it, but well taken into contact there by McGinley. And again, they're not moving away, Heriots. And you're getting to the point where three penalties inside the final ten, there's going to be a warning coming. Well, this should be a chip shot, but you take nothing for granted. Up and through it goes. And the first points of the Force Rock Super 6 for 2021 goes the way of the Boromir Bears. Just not coming it together, and that was the problem there for Boromir. Houston gets himself ready, gets it away. Does he have the distance? He does. And that's Heriot's popping themselves on the board, three points apiece. Keddy nicely away from Marshall. And the referee will give the penalty again. Heriot's just holding on. Up from the University of Bath. So Bath for Boromir, the points continue to flow. Players re-establish a three-point lead, half an hour played here at Megatland. Winton standing up very well, Drummond, Moretu gets a little pass off to him, he did have support outside him, we doing a very difficult pass. Moretu, oh out flat out with a pass, the lovely one over the top, there's an opportunity to go in at the corner, flying in there, can they reach it, they're just short. Drummond goes in, this is good play at the end, they've got a man advantage if they can get it all the way out to Callum Ram, they'll go back on the left hand side, they're trying to be direct once more, terrific defence from Herriots, help, yeah, it's an interesting low variation that one has to say, it's a terrific kick by Houston, and Marshall almost dropping down on that ball, it's available and the penalty for Herriots coming through, and over the top, Michael Ennis being penalised. He's given it all he can, and what a great way to end the half for Boromir Bears. So the half-time scoreline here at Megaland, the Boromir Bears 9, and it's Rugby 3. First yellow card over the season. Advantage will come the way of the Bears. So a free play. How adventurous do they wish to be? There's a the little clip and over. Oh, it was almost taken. The referee will bring that back. Up and over it goes. First score of the second half goes the way of the home side. Driving it forward. Linus is there as well. It's a question of peeling and trying to get their way through. They're fighting their way. Out it comes on oh, the drop. And the referee will call for the penalty, and there's a yellow card in hand. It's just a question to whom it goes. Maybe Ross Dunbar. So now a real advantage to Heriots and a chance for the Golden Acre men to get themselves back into this game. Trailing by nine points. With the biggest win of the Super 6 last season. 53-10 against Bodemure. Now they're trying to find the corner. They're close in the run. It's excellent play by Lloyd Wielden. Super 6 debut, the Englishman, 25 year old, touches down. There's good support play. Moretti might bring this back out to the left hand side, he's going to do so. Long pass, the offload, Pittman will send it across just too far. And that just went flashing past Jordan Edmonds. Big moment. Looks routine, it is routine. It's have set by Heriot's. Are on the front foot here. And it's driving around the corner. A couple of metres short. Hill moves it across. Marshall! He's a couple of metres short as well. The ball bounces out of the side. It's been knocked on. Well, if you want a drama on the opening day of the Force Rock Super 6, you have it here at Megatland. Converted try required by Heriots to leave with at least a point. And it's the only try of the match, and defeated so far by the boot of Tom Pittman. Taken cleanly. Ferry again will need to get himself out of there. Heriot's driving. They've got a good drive on. Look like they're over the line and they've scored. Well, it's all about the conversion now, but they've gone through and they've gone over well. 
and Heriots get themselves within two points. Their second try of the match in Wilson. The skipper is delighted. It all comes down to this kick. It was well set up. They wanted to keep it in kickable area. Bruce Houston has this kick. So we get 15 points each. Gets the kick away. Oh, it's off the post and across and Buttermuir will win. What a dramatic ending to the Super 6 opening day. Oh, there'll be no consoling for Houston. He would have expected to slot that. His teammates will come up and console him. We'll come back to that as the game develops. Stretching them now, Baggett with a long pass out to the left wing. And he's in. A score. First score to Paddy Anderson on the far side. Just under eight minutes. Baggett saw the opportunity. They had sucked in the Stirling County defence. Out it comes, Stirling. Again, the floated pass this time to their left winger. And he repeats the score. It's the Stirling County number 11, Logan Trotter. Almost an identical floated pass there from the standoff, repeating what the Southern Knights had done just minutes earlier. Throw in some changes in the laws halfway through the first half. Stirling County 7, Southern Knights 5. Stirling playing themselves back into the game quite nicely. Now with their second real assault on the Southern Knights line. Tightly knit, they have in time and they have the score. They've gone all the way. Seven minutes or thereabouts. There's a chance coming here though with a beautiful line, beautiful take. And cut towards the corner by the Stirling County Centre. Grant Hughes, lovely score, simple score, direct running. But Ian Kennedy, Ian Kenny, perfectly right. This time, it's a cleaner take. Rennick joins the three again, and in he's got uh, Andrew Mitchell, the winger, in there as well. All sorts of bodies being thrown at this, and he's given a penalty try this time. It's a penalty try for bringing side entry and collapse, and that's a yellow card. So a good chance here for Southern Knights to get back nearer. Sterling have got a minute to play with the man down. So it's as good a chance now or never. The Knights have it. Coming in off the back. Barely moving now. Sterling have managed to hold them. They're claiming it, and they've got it. They've driven through the middle. They've driven through the middle, and they have the score that they were looking for with the man advantage. Holden and managed it for Stirling County in the first half. This time, Baggett ships it up, drifts it in on the wind, and he's managed to add the two points. And it was adding the two points to Fraser Rennick's score. The hooker just pluffing himself over, having been propelled. Driving forward. Penalty, advantage, not Penalty coming as well for not rolling away. Beautiful little trip. Just a flick of the boot and over it went. Russell Anderson this time. Baggett. Jackson. Jackson's away. Jackson has cut through. He's on his own. Oh, and now that's trouble here for Sterling. There's trouble here for Sterling County. This could be and will be. It's a penalty, first of all. Fraser Rennick of Southern Knights is the Foss Rock player of the match. In they go. The Southern Knights sense that they could be on the point of snatching victory here. A penalty coming as well. Down they go and they have the score anyway. They have the score. The Southern Knights have taken the score. 
Baggett silently, he's missed it. He's missed it in the complete silence offered to him by Bridgehaw. He's been unable to make that conversion. Will they now have the nerve to go? It's been knocked on and Ian Kenny, the referee, has called time. What a finish here at Bridgehaw. It's gone right to the wire. A good turnover. And this is where I think Ayr just need to maybe keep possession, look after possession for that little bit longer. And all goes under a bit of pressure here and suddenly Watsonians are away. A clean pair of heels are going to be underneath the posts for the opening score. And Harvey Elms, okay, who's 31 Scottish, seven strides to his name, scores the opening try of this game inside the opening quarter. Well, just as we were saying, what I think Ayr needed was to look after possession, to maintain possession for a few phases. But from a first phase attack, it's an interesting shape, but the ball goes to the ground there under pressure from the Watsonians' defence flying up. And it's that Lewis Berg who picks up and slips it to Harvey Elms. So it's a blitz defence, working really hard to get off the line, put the attack under pressure. Ayr just need to hold on to that possession. But there's the, the slip pass to Harvey Elms, and he's quick. All that experience, as you say, in the seventh circuit. Watsoni is just forcing them wide. It's been stripped by Lanark there. They're coming on at a rate of knots outside centre. Tom Williams coming on to the ball, held up just on the try line. McPherson now tries to spin round. Advantage for Ayr as Watsonian's right winger is offside but they work it round the corner and Matthew Minogue, the Australian, is in for a reply score for Ayrshire Bulls coming exactly 23 minutes into the first half. An important response from the home side. Yeah, an important response and a well-worked try actually. Uh, good line out, good drive, put under pressure immediately. Then you can see once Ayr keep a hold of possession and build through the phases, they've got so many attacking options. That Watsonian's try line. Back it comes to the big rangey second row forward there, Tom Everard. He takes the ball into the contact situation and that secondary pass and drive has them across the line. And referee Finlay Brown having a good long hard look at that and again them coming together, George Thornton. I think Chris, it's Thornton that's going to be awarded the score. Yeah, it's a good attack, wasn't it? George Thornton finishing off with that pick and goal but it came from the counter-attack initially, Matt Davidson carried it. And then there's a brilliant late pass from Bloodworth to Fantini. Fantini's been impressive as well over the ball. He was impressive there in the attack. And he got almost to the line. He was dragged down just short, I think, by Carl Davis. And then there's the finish off. One or two phases later, George Thornton driving over low, hard to the ground. And he's hard to stop from that range. There's a the finish again. But good build-up from the Ayrshire Bulls. This is a, becoming a, a critical point in the game, just a, a point separating the sides, approaching the hour mark, the high up and under, and again that's gathered and able to work his way around some space there. The Watsonians left winger Harvey Elms, Elms does extremely well, and look at that, the pass infield, it just opened up for Watsonians, and in goes Jamie Forbes for a try that gives the visitors the lead once again. Harvey Elms there, he looked so assured underneath the high ball and then he went off on a solo run down this right hand side and it almost seemed too easy for the visitors to know just as soon as he catch that ball to evade the tackle and then get the head up, the chip and chase, a little bit fortunate with the bounce but well done, great pass on the inside as well and this that comes after a, a sustained period of pressure as Lee Miller chips over the extras, a sustained period of pressure that Watoni has had in that uh, Ayrshire Bulls 22. And again, they'll need to try and control it at walking pace, but what's on is don't seem to have any answer at the moment. The referee, Finlay Brown, up with play. Again, they look for a, a secondary drive here as they begin to splinter. Out it comes once more, on there towards Minogue. Nairn, has he got the strength and the reach? He's down, despite the best efforts there, a pullback, Jamie Forbes. And Nairn lifts himself off the deck. And that was a, a very important score from a, an Ayrshire Bulls point of view at this stage in the game to bring them back to within a point. For Robin Ayrn, wasn't it? It came from that massive mall. There must have been nine or ten players in it to start with and then just crept towards the line. It was all, ball was always under control, always moving forward. And then when it did come out, because there's so many people in that breakdown, you have to score and Robin Ayrn did exactly that. Minogue to give Ayrshire Bulls the lead once more. To score a one point lead for the home side. That looks pretty good from here. The assistant referee says the flags. And Yusha Bulls in front by 21 points to 20. And we're now well into the closing quarter of the game. Cullen again on towards Miller. 
Again, they're working it down the left hand side, so we need to have the advantage. Richard Rule's going to be penalised for a high challenge. It's landed conversions and a second penalty. It's not going to be far away. Another successful three points for Miller and for Watsonians. And that means that Watsonians are back in front. Again, Watsonians looking at Sam Daly at the back of the, the line out. And controlled here at the back of the drive. Ball tipped under the right arm. Cullen will have it now. On he just bypasses a couple of the, the centres. Bear coming on to play there. Was able just to squat and check. The grubber kick runs through the inside centre then. Is chasing after it. Kutsir, I was asking quite a lot of Kutsir, but uh, the advantage was being played there by Watsonian, so it was a bit of a free ball for them to prod into the Ayrshire 22. That will be his fourth successful penalty of the game. Miller then, to extend Watsonian's advantage, to give them a lead of five points. He has, and the home side, a, a bit of work to do in the, the closing stages of this game managed that last bit of the game very, very well. A difficult 40 seconds there, but they've done really well. Yeah. Dejected group of uh, Ayrshire Bulls players have to admit defeat on the opening match of this campaign for both these sides. A Fosrock Super 6 victory in the end for Watsonians by 26 points to 21.